Hey everyone, thanks for listening to Sex with Emily. Today's show is all about orgasms. I'm taking you through the four types of orgasms that women can have with the help of the Sex with Emily team. We'll be sharing our personal tips on how to achieve them by yourself or with a partner. Plus some stories from the team about their own orgasmic experiences and the toys that help them get there. Thanks for listening. Listeners and friends, they're always asking me how to spice up their relationships. They all want to know how to bring the spark back. One great way is to add in some variety. Well, our good friends at AdamandEve.com know all about that. AdamandEve.com is where you'll find all my favorite high-end toys, like the Magic Wand and the Wevibe Tango, as well as every formula of quality lube you can think of. You should all be using lube, by the way. I haven't made that clear. Try out Pure or Sliquid. Adam and Eve sells those as well. The folks at adamandeve.com are pleasers, so they put together a special deal for Sex with Emily listeners. If you order today and use code EMILY, they'll cut the price of almost any single item in half. Not enough for you? They'll also toss in three free DVDs and ship it all to you for free. And for a limited time, they will include a free gift. It's a sexy premium silicone pleasure ring. Rings are a great way to enhance intercourse, and if you haven't tried one before... This is the time. It can help guys stay harder longer while providing that crucial clitoral stimulation that most women need to orgasm during intercourse. Get your free ring, free shipping, free DVDs, and 50% off any item. Go to adamandeve.com and use code EMILY at checkout. Look into his eyes. They're the eyes of a man obsessed by sex. Eyes that mock our sacred institutions. Hey, Emily, you got a boyfriend? Because uh, my man E here, he just got his heart broken. He thinks you're kind of cute. A girl's got to have her standards. Oh, my. Do women know about shrinkage? Isn't it common knowledge? What do you mean, like laundry? It shrinks? Can we not talk about sex so much? Are you kidding me? Oh, my God, I feel so good. Being bad feels pretty good. Well, you know, Emily's not the kind of girl you just play with. to Sex with Emily. We're talking about sex relationships and everything in between. For more information, go to sexwithemily.com and check out all the amazing posts we do every day and blog posts and videos and things, you know, information we're putting up to help you have better sex and relationships. And while you're there, you can also subscribe to our podcast, which we love because we do two plus shows a week. And you can also follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, Snapchat. So fun. We can stay connected all day long. And uh, yeah, subscribe to our newsletter because that's always a good time. Okay, I'm here with my trusty team in our new spanking new studio. Yeah. How you guys doing? Good. Doing great. Well, thank you for showing up today to talk about your orgasms, as we do every day, but we don't actually record it. So <laughs> now we're all here. Yay. So do you want to go around and um, say something about yourself? And if you were a tree, what tree you'd be? No, just kidding. You don't have to say that, but you could. Uh, who wants to start? <laughs> um, I'll go first. Uh, my name's Madison. I'm a vegetarian Gemini, and I really enjoyed orgasms, obviously. And if cool. I was a tree, I think I would be a palm tree, to be perfectly honest. I kind of have that vibe, I think. Yeah, Maybe. well, we do, we do have Summer Madison on Lori, yeah. Lori's computer anyways. Yeah. Right. So that, okay. was, that was Jamie. Right, Jamie, is, what hi, up? I'm Jamie. Um, if I was a tree, I'd have to be a willow tree just because they're very laid back and cool, and they just kind of hang out. Aren't those the mm. crying trees? Like weeping willow, yeah. yeah. Okay, well, I don't cry. I'd be a, ha- I'd be a happy willow. Okay. I'd, I'd be the cheerful. That's cool. You'd make up your own country, as as you should. Yeah. You could do combo of trees. You'd be like the, the weeping, happy willow. The weeping willow before it really discovered that life is kind of hard. Right. Like maybe in like its youth. <laughs> pre weep exactly. That's all, that's Perfect all. childhood. Nothing makes you cry yet. Mm. It's a good time. Um, Love I'm it. Lori. Uh, I just bought a new car and it's red and red's my favorite color and if i was a tree i would be a fake christmas tree um because i like so deep yeah i like to be like the center of a celebration i like parties and also i'm really scared of dying (laughs) right so you're already dead right you don't have to worry about it i don't have to right that's Great. a good one. Okay. Emily, what kind of tree would you be? Gosh, you know what's so funny is that I was I was joking with the tree thing. I threw it out. I was like, oh, it's a, you know, but I, I, I learned so much mm-hmm. about you girls. Um, I think I'd be a birch tree. 
Do you guys know birch trees? We grew up with them like in Michigan. Like they were in Canada where I went to camp. And the reason why I like birch trees because you can constantly peel back all the layers of the oh, birch. Oh, yeah. I know. And it, like, I loved it. I would peel them off and I'd write great letters home to my parents and write off. So I like that because I feel like I'm always peeling back my own layers personally. And I like people to write all over me. Wow. We used to call those uh, strip trees. Yeah. I think you were telling me a story about them that yeah. you used to. Stri- yeah, that's cool. so funny. Yeah. Yeah. Gosh, I had a tree there. We all have trees. Um, amazing. Okay, so you guys, thank you for coming in to uh, talk about this very important topic, plural, and these are the different kinds of orgasms. Oh, but first, let's um, do a little sex in the news. Mm-hmm. Okay, science reveals what it may say about your personality if you're still friends with your ex. Mm-hmm. Now, how about this? If you recently yep. noticed that you un- your ex unfriended you on Facebook, Go ahead and check. We'll wait. It could be because the person caught wind of a new and somewhat disturbing psychological research. A study published um, by researchers at Oakland University found that people with dark personality traits, i.e. those who are generally disagreeable, manipulative, and exploitive, were more likely to be friends with former flames for practical and sexual reasons. Um, so researchers asked these people to come up with a bunch of reasons for staying friends with an ex and people used the, the, like they said, you know, oh, they were a great listener. Um, and that, if you said they were a great listener, that would fall under reliability and sentiment, uh, be a sense of being with someone who's sentimental. Um, I wanted money from them would mean that you only stay friends with them. Like it's a very pragmatic view. Like I'm going to get something from them or we have sex from time to time. That's sexual access. So here's my point. When I first read this, I was disturbed because it said there was dark psychological profile attached to people who stay friends with their exes. But once you get in there, you realize it's only the people who are like, well, he gives me money or she gives me blowjobs. For me, it's like, I truly love my exes. Like we really had this like deep friendship. We were together for, you know, long years ago that I even forgot that we dated, that we really connect. And it doesn't seem like it's a deep, dark psychological trait of mine I mean I might have other ones but that's not one of them so anyway um the takeaway is not that if you're friends with someone you stay you feel like check yourself into a hospital nothing's wrong um in fact if your past relationship your post relationship like works fine and you're happy no problem but if your ex only comes around when they're like want to have sex with you or they need something then we know there's a problem so I say to my exes in San Francisco last weekend, and, you know, we're friends because of the, you know, we're sentimental. We've got like this true connection. In fact, it was funny because I was staying there and I knew that in the morning he was going to his, see his new, his girlfriend um, in, in New York and his suitcase was out. And I was like, oh, and I brought like my sex with Ellen t-shirts. So I thought, how funny. I'll put one in a suitcase on top of a suitcase and that says, you know, I had sex with Emily and all I got was a t-shirt and I, and then he woke up in the morning and he like picks it up. He's like, this isn't my size. And uh-huh. I was like. I wanted you to laugh. I wanted you to like, it wasn't like I tucked it in the suitcase so he, the girlfriend would open it. In fact, she knows that we're friends. But still, he was like, no, that's not my size. I'm like, would you wear it? He's like, I don't know if I'd wear it. It's a free like, t-shirt. Yeah. It's a free yeah. t-shirt. But it was, I thought it was funny. Yeah, and they're um, like really soft. Yeah. <laughs> they're really good t-shirts. They, they are. It's anyway, but no, we're just good friends. And we, you know, we talk. I know what's been funny about that relationship as well is that we can like actually go back and work on like retroactively things that happened in our, like I was taking the, the somatic training and that's, I was in San Francisco and I was like learning so many things. I was like, well now when we were dating and we had these dysfunctional things, how would we have dealt with these things? Like how would we have communicated? I was feeling abandoned and you were feeling smothered and mm-hmm. you know, I broke it down. It was a good trip. That's Thera- good. See, even your ex-boyfriends can be used in your future therapy. That's just saying. Okay, so let's uh, give a little shout out to our sponsors now. Uh, give them some love and we'll be right back. If you've listened to the show the last couple months, you've probably heard me talk about a unique product called The Womanizer. A while back, the owners of the company asked if they could send me one to test out, which, of course, you know me, I agreed to it. I own and review a lot of toys, and I was fairly confident I've tried every category of product around, but I was wrong. The Womanizer was designed in Germany, and unlike anything else on the market, it indirectly stimulates the clitoris using suction. It's kind of like a sexy ear thermometer. It has a silicone cylinder on the face that you place over your clitoris, kind of like how a partner might use their mouth. And while it's on, you can vary the suction and move it around to create an amazingly intense experience. In fact, most women in their focus group achieve orgasm in one minute. That's right, a 60-second orgasm. You can just knock it out if you want. So I tried the Womanizer, and they weren't kidding. It's amazing. The suction is adjustable, and you can position it to create so many different sensations. It's The Womanizer is really in a category of its own, and I suggest you check it out for yourself. Go to sexwithemily.com and click on the Womanizer banner for more information. 
Okay, this is a very important day, girls, because it is the last day of masturbation month. So it's very important that we're doing the show about orgasms on this monumental day. And I just, how'd your masturbation month, how'd it go down for you? It was a lot of masturbation for me. <laughs> I mean, more, like I masturbate a lot usually and I did it more. You did, right? Because cause you're yeah. a hard worker. I think so. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. you knew there was some hard work to do in masturbation month. Um, but it's all about pleasure because our bodies have such a huge capacity for pleasure and just because you've mastered the basics doesn't mean you should stop your journey there. Meaning you know how to get your stuff off. You do three minutes with the magic wand or you, you know, jack off and you're done. We all have our go-to moves and safety orgasms. But, you know, you don't have to stop there. So with the help of my team here, we are taking you through four different orgasms, uh, four different kinds of orgasms, sharing our own experiences with each type of orgasms, which I think is so interesting because I'm sure they're all going to be very different because I'm telling you women all we get there but we all get there in different ways and plus some of the toys that helped us get there so this is fun okay and let me tell you this little disclaimer the yes this show is masturbation focused but that doesn't mean it's only for the women okay because guys I know you're like I just jack off I'm fine but the more you learn about your partner's pleasure and let me tell you something there's some stuff here to be learned about your own masturbation routine um you will enjoy your sex life better and you will be able to communicate better and you're gonna love the show so just keep going with us here so there's four types of orgasms we're gonna cover we got clitoral which is common we've all had what we all we've all had a clitoral one yes uh g-spot slash vaginal mm-hmm. we're all good we're all clear with that okay we've all had one here blended yes my favorite mm-hmm. okay we've all had one that's great Multiple orgasms. Mm-hmm. Yes. Okay, good. So this is what we're covering. So we're all going to be able to chime in. Okay, clitoral orgasm. Just going to give you a little briefing here. Located above the vaginal opening. Has 8,000 nerve endings. Its sole purpose on the planet is to give you pleasure. That's it. Looks like a little button. Uh, but for most of us, the clitoris is actually uh, underneath the surface. So there's like the clitoral legs. And there's all these there's all these nerve endings that make it feel really good. But really, you could focus on that, you know, that's where the love button is. And uh, we're going to talk to you about how to find it, where to find it, what to do with it. Um, and that's when you can use both direct and indirect stimulation to pleasure it. And the reason why clitoral orgasm is the most common way that women orgasm, um, it's so accessible. It's so easy. Like we all have, we all figure it out somehow, like how to find it. Like, you know, the wind blows. You're like, oh, that, that's an orgasm. You know, shower head, pool jet, all that stuff. Okay, so how to have a clitoral. Oh, okay, you use your pointer. Middle finger, you place them on your clitoris, clitoral hood, um, the skin right above the visible part of the clitoris, and you start con- start moving your fingers around. And um, you can use a circular motion. You want to make sure that, you know, you've lots of lube. And you just experiment. Like, that's really what you do. It's all about experimenting with, like, pressures and strokes. Um, and we actually covered this really well. I was saying deep, deeper penetration, deeper coverage on clitoral stimulation in a recent podcast, Great Solo Sex Expectations. And we take you through a range of masturbation techniques about the clitoris. Plus on our website, tons of articles on that. You can check it out. But I want to get to my esteemed round table here. And I want to know how you all discovered clitoral orgasms. I discovered, I, hi, That's it's Lori. Lori. Um, the uh, fake Christmas tree. Uh, I discovered my first clitoral orgasm at quite a young age, around six or seven, when I first started showering by myself and I didn't know how to rinse off my, like, you know, lady parts. <laughs> so I positioned myself beneath the shower Very spigot. Very forward thinking, right. That's right. what you do. To, like, get Smart all the kid. soap out of there. Um, and then I, yeah, and then I had an orgasm and was, like, very pleased with it and continued to do that. And you were how old? six or seven okay and then yeah. you kept right that's the shower head that's it right. happens a lot of the jets how about you jamie um well mine was similar just because it was in the shower uh with my shower head um it's always been able to come off of the thing the little mm. the holder of it oh, so nice. it's very movable so i can move it in a bunch of different areas and it just makes it easier to wash myself but just that's how i first God. found my clitoral orgasm that way so lucky yeah. Um, I was taking swim classes when I was like six or seven in a big public pool and we had to like I wasn't even deep like deep end swimming yet and so we had to like hold on to the edge of the the pool and like move along and I just passed over the pool jet and was like oh hey oh, water they're probably like I don't remember specifically I remember that moment but they're probably like Madison come along and I'm like no I'm just gonna stay here for a second but I remember being like whoa like it was almost like too intense you know like mm-hmm. And after that, me and the shower head were really good friends. I figured out how to recreate mm-hmm. it. 
and that was a good time. God, I don't understand like we didn't have a shower in my house. Like, <laughs> it's not like I had like baths. I don't know why this didn't happen to me, but that's okay. So you found it that way, which is common because women, it's like horseback riding. Okay, so um, how you, that's how you discovered it. And then, okay, we're going to talk about a clitoral sex toy since we've all had them. Lori, yes. you as one of your missions here, I know you've got a lot of difficult jobs, and uh, but one of them, we, we wanted you to try the Tango. Now, I know you love the magic wand. I do. But we said, here's a Tango, which is a much different kind of toy. Right. It's um, it's like a couple, three inches long, and it looks just like a lipstick. Like it's in the shape of a lipstick. And I, when I first saw it, I was like, there's no way this thing is going to be able to bring me to orgasm. Like it's, I'm used to the magic wand. It's huge, and I like it. But it's awesome. Like it's very powerful. I like that it's a hard plastic because I'm so accustomed to like the silicone toys, which are great, but it's just something different. It's nice to change. Variety. It up. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. And it's not only is it very powerful, but it's so quiet. It's quiet. Yeah. Whisper quiet. Yeah. It's That's true. Amazing. And it's waterproof. Right. Isn't Completely it? submersible, right. which I love because I like to masturbate in the shower and quiet, right. so I can use it when my boyfriend's sleeping next to me and he doesn't wake up. Oh, I love that. Yeah. That's really cool. Yeah. So so how was it, Um, so usually you like the magic wand, right. and then so you're probably thinking, oh, it's powerful. So was this a different kind of orgasm? Yeah, it was a different kind of orgasm because the magic wand's head is pretty large, so it kind of covers the entire clitoral area. Right, like you put it on your clitoris, but it's, you can't help but have the, right. Right, the bulb. Right, everywhere. Mm-hmm. But the tango since it's got like a little uh, slanted lipstick point, I could place it in different positions around the clitoris and like the, um, like from nine to 12 o'clock, if you're looking at the clitoris head on is the quadrant that feels the best to me. That's the ki- the part of right? the That's clitoris. That's popular quadrant. Is, yeah. Is it? Yeah. The, the right, the upper left hand side. Upper left. Upper yeah. left, yeah. It just feels different. It's weird. Like all the other quadrants feel the same and then that one is like, No, oh, that's where that actually winner. is a common quadrant for many women. So that's where you did the little point that you could right. point it and direct it. Like, yeah, on that side, that's my quadrant. Direct it there and like, th- I feel like that orgasm lasts longer and is more intense. Oh, nice. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I love the Tanko. I've tried it um, a while ago when it came out and I like it because they also have the attachments to it. You can turn it. It's, it's, the thing is, it's like a bullet vibe, which is how a lot of us, my first vibrator was a bullet vibe like with batteries and all that. And this is just like, I think the ultimate bullet vibe. Right. I love it. So I'm glad you tried that one. Okay. So let's get into the G-spot vaginal orgasm. Okay. Science still debating its existence. Whenever I read the stuff, I'm like, really? It's usually some male researchers are going, oh, there is no G-spot. Yeah. Because <laughs> you haven't found it. Exactly. Okay, so many consider it to be the holy grail of female pleasure. It was discovered by Ernst Grafenberg in 1940s, uh, hence the G, Grafenberg, uh, Grafenberg spot. Is it Ernest? Yeah. I said Ernst. It's no, Ernest. I think it's Ernst. Is it Ernst? Yeah. I think yeah, I, mean, I always said Ernest. Ernst. Okay, weird. he described German. in the erogenous zone. Okay, let me get into my German accent. How you say? Okay, he described an erot. Um, I can't do it now. Erogenous zone on the front wall of the vagina found that a small amount of women, particularly those with a strong pelvic floor muscles, could have powerful orgasms when thus areola stimulated. You sound like Bernie Sanders, <laughs> actually. <laughs> <laughs> like a Jewish German. The one so percent. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Okay. okay. <laughs> G-spot orgasm is more elusive than clitoral. Okay, so 30% of women out there report to being able to have deep, intense orgasms from vaginal penetration alone, but it's frustrating. Um, so that's only 30% can have them. From That's, you know, not that's not the majority of women. You all hear that? So it's really common that women have to, you know, that find other ways to orgasm during intercourse, which is fine. And um, this is all about finding your G-spot as well, so we're going to help you so you can eventually have one perhaps but it's frustrating for a lot of women they expect they should just be able to have them during sex and they assume that a penis should be able to do the job you know and they say oh I can't have one it's not possible I've had sex with all these penises have been inside me there's all these penises and I've done it and I've never had a g-spot orgasm and I think that a lot of us tell ourselves stories that aren't necessarily true around sex Mm -hmm. and I know that I did I didn't think it was possible for me to have a g-spot orgasm I didn't think it was possible for a lot of things and um you got to just put, you got to keep trying because it's like everything. It just because it didn't happen doesn't mean it can't. Masturbation, great way to get it going. So it's located on the front wall of the vagina, two inches inside the vaginal opening, cluster of a tissue that's roughly the size of a benin, a benin, a, bizi, a bean, a bazini, a bean, 
Um, it resembles the texture of a walnut. And it, yeah. again, it helps for when a woman's turned on, has more like arousal, mm-hmm. that area is more engorged, mm-hmm. and then the G spot will be easier to find. It's true. Uh, it swells, it's more sensitive to the touch. So, um, our great solo sex expectations podcast. Yeah, t- again, yeah. Another one teaches you how to have a G spot orgasm. We get really into it. So, you gotta just be relaxed, patient, and listen, just because it hasn't happened through the 85 guys you slept with. Uh, or women you've slept with haven't had one either. I don't know what it is, but because guys might think that a woman, th- I don't want to be sexist here. A lot mm. of people have never found their G spot, but it might not happen right away. It might not happen with all the sex you've had because you need to spend some time alone with your fingers, with another penis, with a toy, and find it and figure it out. It is great work and some of the most important work you can do. Use your fingers, use lube, all that stuff. So let's talk about how you all found your G spots. Um, I guess I'll start. It's Jamie here. Uh, cause mine was pretty, it was a pretty interesting, uh, experience for myself. Um, I was having sex with my boyfriend at the time. We were about to take a shower and we were up on the counter and my back wall next to the counter isn't, it, it's the whole thing is a mirror. And so we have outlets that are on the mirror, you know, so if you plug in certain stuff. So I didn't realize that I was backing up onto the mirror and the condensation from the mirror is dripping down. And as I'm about to actually orgasm, I got a little electrocute shock in my oh back. Oh, my God. So I don't know if that, like, added to the experience. It definitely felt really good. But afterwards, I was like, whoa. Like, what And that was your first happened? G-spot orgasm? Yeah. First one. It was just, got like, electrocuted. Perfect. Yeah, it was perfectly on there. And then it was funny because the next time I tried to do it again. You didn't get electrocuted oh, again? I didn't. Now, it's <laughs> now do you get you into electroplay? Electricity. Okay, that's that's hilarious. But, but that's... But you found it. Yeah. And then I tried <laughs> to work at it more by myself. So I was like, I need to figure out how to do this again. <laughs> right. Without like the, all the bells and whistles and electro. Yeah, uh, exactly. And, without and the electrocution. <laughs> um, okay. What about, what about uh, Madison? Um, the first night at G-Spot Orgasm, it was with my ex-boyfriend. And we were having some uh, hot and sweaty car sex, as people who live at home tend to do. And I was me on top and I, it happened and I was like, we kind of looked at each other and we we're like, what is that? And this is before the sex with Emily days. This is back when I didn't know the difference between one orgasm or the other. And I wasn't really like expecting to have orgasms. I thought that's all sex needed to be was just like pounding. And so I had it and then we kind of looked at each other and we're like, whoa. And then we just kept going. And if it happened, cool, but it didn't really. And then later on, I started to figure out like what that was and how to have it. And then I've just been rocking them ever since been great it's been a great ride good great ride with the g-spot um okay so there's lots of different toys out there that you can use i really like the amarino great g-spot sex toy fun factory um makes it the amarino it's body safe silicone waterproof here's the thing about it though it it it's got like a i just like the way it it has it's girthy i like the shape for me it just hits my g-spot like just right and it's not too big and it has doesn't have too many bells and whistles on it except for one that i like and it's got this yellow band that stretches around it and so when the band is on it um takes the vibrations and it like circulates it all around the you know because it 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 attaches a little nub and attaches around the vibrator so that vibration circulates all around your vagina like you put it inside you it's like it's all around like your labia on the inside and the outside so it's like making every surface area that it touches like vibrate in the same way that's That's, amazing yeah (laughs) right yeah um and so i like that and i like the way that um it just the the position and the shape of it the way i can just like hit my g-spot it makes me really happy I think some toys are especially like everyone has like a different story of like a G-spot toy that like really hits it for them. And it just proves that like every woman's like built a little differently. But I know you were saying that it's like um, it's like a little bit girthier like and that's like part of why it's like kind of shorter and girthier. It's shorter. Yep. It's shorter and girthier. So it didn't need to be like long crazy, but it's mm-hmm. uh, yeah. Yeah. It's a nice uh, G-spot fun. Good times. And also when I do my Kegel exercise, I've talked about this before. It really helps me. Like when I do my kegels on a regular basis which i have been doing all year i can just have g-spot orgasms like no problem and they they and honestly even though i've learned how to and i was i was like a lot of women who didn't i never had it during intercourse like i had to like get in there and figure it out and when i did i still don't have it every time but when i do you know it's amazing and the more i do kegels squeeze those muscles i can have one so that's another reason why you should oh download my app kegel camp yeah it's a good time okay blended orgasms okay 
They're the G spot and the clitoris at the same time. It's like a whole party and your entire vulva was invited. Okay, you guys, so common ways to have a blended orgasm during oral sex because your partner is performing cunnilingus, using their fingers to massage the G spot at the same time. That can be it's amazing. Amazing. It's the best. Um, during intercourse, so you're having uh, intercourse, penis, and vagina sex, and a lot of clitoral stimulation. Uh, whether it's through manual stimulation to your clitoris using a toy or a position like woman on top that provides the direct pressure, pressure you can also have a blended orgasm that way because the penis is inside you. And to have a blended orgasm yourself, um, toy. Yeah. Your best friend. That's a really good way to have one. So uh, let's talk to my trusty team here. Who's had a blended orgasm? Me. Madison. Yeah, right. had one. Yeah. I think we've all had one. We've all yeah. had one. Lori Did- dropped a bomb on me and was like, well, I've had one and I didn't know that. Yeah, I'm I thought you were had- sure I've had what? one. Because I haven't Recently, had like I feel a... like you tell us all this stuff. Yeah, well, when when we did the show with the Raven, the Nova, like mm-hmm. I, I had the Nova, which is awesome, but I've never had a G-spot orgasm by itself. So I was like getting really frustrated. I was on my mission to like make my G-spot orgasm happen and... I had an orgasm in which I was effectively stimulating both the G-spot and the clitoris at the same time. So I can only classify that as a blended yeah, orgasm, that's right? exactly I'd it. say, who am I? Yeah. You can, yes. You can kind of tell because it's a little, they're two different sensations and you were, right. yeah. So it's like. Yeah, I felt both of them. Mm-hmm. I just couldn't have the G-spot one without the clitoral but stimulation. But that's still, no, that counts. Still counts, right? <laughs> totally okay, counts. Still I'm counts. counting it. I'm writing it in my diary. Yeah. <laughs> Dear diary. <laughs> I don't rule out any orga- yeah. an orgasm. An orgasm is an orgasm. Totally You're good. Yeah, for me, Madison, usually it's like um, I start off having a clitoral and then I can have another like blended afterwards. So it's like if I start off with like clitoral stimulation, like usually my favorite usually is like with oral when my boyfriend's going down on me and he's already given me a clitoral orgasm. And then he brings the fingers in and I get really excited and I start to dance. Um, and then I can have like another clitoral, but like with G-Spot at the same time and it's like crazy. Yeah, it's kind of like a process. Like you're working yeah. up to it's like each step. It's like, okay, I have my <laughs> my clitoral orgasm first. All right. Oh, now we're going to throw in a little G-spot action in there with the clitoral and it's like, okay, clitoral is going to fall by the wayside, just going to have the G-spot there. See, I haven't reached that. That's my next step. That's I'm like 2 out of 3. Right, like you stop with the clitoral, but you'll get there. You yeah. Know, I'm, sh- the I'm convinced. Just gotta so keep, not worry. keep practicing. Just put aside the magic wand for a little bit, you know. Okay. Let's just be doing hard. that. I know it's hard, <laughs> Yeah, it's I good know. to mix them up. I know. Not gotta, that you're going to become numb and anything's mm. bad from any toy, but it's just like sex is all about variety. I have to yeah. have someone yeah. like hide it from me and not yeah. tell me where it is. Right. Yeah. I right. recently brought out my magic wand with uh, the cord one, and I was like, oh, hey, oh, old gee. friend. Yeah. I haven't used it in a while, and it was really nice. Um, but yeah, blended. So I made it my mission to try the Sugar Pop by Vibratex. It's like a really cool um, – it's different from their other toys because it's made of body safe elastomer, which has like a little bit more like give. It's not like the hard plastic or the silicone. It's splash proof. It ha- it takes a uh, AAA batteries, which was interesting because I haven't had like a battery toy in a while, but I really liked it. And it's dual stimulation. It's got the internal uh, shaft has like the rotating beads, which is again, I've never had a toy like that before. And I've, you know, I've seen the rabbit have it and all that. And I was like, all right, we're going to see how this goes. And it's got the external clitoral tickler, which is, um, really funny just to watch we played it and we turned it on in the office the other day and I was like holy oh, like, because it just like right. it goes crazy it's like very very intense um and it's got dual motors so like Laura you were saying that you you know when you are trying to have a g-spot orgasm you can like be using it for blended and then take away the clitoral and nice. then just have like the internal going yeah you can turn it out it's totally. different switches yeah I totally recommend um doing that but so I liked it a lot. I thought it was surprisingly strong. That was like my biggest takeaway from it was I wasn't expecting it to be as like powerful as it was. And um, especially because it's battery powered. I'm so just not used to that. Um, but the clitoral appendage is super intense. Even on like the lowest setting, it's very powerful. And I just discovered discovered why it was so intense. It has these like little nubs on the inside of it. Emily and I were like looking at the toy, like actually looking at it. I was like, oh, hey, that explains it. But like it's got these like little like soft rubber, like uh whatever that's called elastomer nubs and it like transmits the vibrations throughout the clitoris so not just directly on the clitoris like all the area around it which was nice um and I like the way the buttons are laid out because I know we've all kind of like had those issues where you're trying to turn on a toy and all of a sudden you like switch the setting when you're really close but you want to turn it up and right it has like two rows and they're like organized really like really nicely like um the top one is like to turn it uh, it's like to turn it on or do the functions. The middle one is on and then up for the, and then the off one is just off, which is great. 
because um, in case someone's like walking by and it's a little loud, you're like just off mm-hmm. and it's just kill switch done. Awesome. And I really liked that about it, and I liked that um, the rotating beads were were very pleasurable. Overall, I would give it I would give it a good rating. Plus, it's like a I don't know, just a cool toy. <laughs> good, juice bu- good juice butts. Delivered, yeah. word, delivered good juice butt orgasms. Totally. I mean, I warmed up beforehand with like a clitoral because I just, you know, want, didn't want to go in cold and use <laughs> lots of up. lube with it. That's the only thing I have to say is lots and water-based lots of lube. Water-based lube? Yeah, water-based lube because um, the silicone will eat away at it. But right. overall, Always fun. use lube. Don't allow lube. Okay, <laughs> thank you for that, Madison. That was the what? That was the sugar pot. That was the sugar pot by Vibertime. Okay, cool. All right, multiple orgasms. Woo! How to have them. Okay, to achieve them, you need to focus on all your attention on the clitoris. And you got to be patient with this one. Because after the first orgasm, a lot of women think, you know, find that their clitoris is super sensitive and you want to like pull back. Or you think, oh, that felt good. I'm done. You know, I'm out. But really, you know, we're so lucky because our refractory period is so short that we can kind of just like, if it's too sensitive, we just kind of pull back from the stimulation. And you can try like massaging areas around it, like the labia or um, you know, your inner thighs or your breasts. And then you go back to it, you know, you go back to your clitoris and you start like wrapping yourself up again and you can also do this with a toy if you were using a vibrator you might have it higher and then you crank it down lower and then you can just start teasing all around the clitoris and then you go back to it and you when you go back again you want it to be like a lower intensity but you know just keep breathing too that's a big part about having the next orgasm so you have that first one you keep breathing you know you kind of bring down your energy and your intensity and then you you know kind of start to the energy starts to rise again and you just want to stay connected mentally and physically with your body So instead of worrying, is it going to happen again? Is it going to happen? You know, you just kind of like, you're paying attention to your body. You see the build again because you keep touching yourself, but not on the clitoris. Then you bring yourself back to the clitoris. Then you'll probably have another one. Mm -hmm. And then another one. That's all you need to get going. But Lori, I know. Yes. This is what I This is a good story. Proud moment. About your multiple orgasmic experience. Right. Well, we, when I first used the touch, we all were talking about multiple orgasms, and I'd said I'd never had them. I was convinced. The Wee Vibe could, Touch. Yeah, the Wee Vibe Touch. Right, touch, right. I was convinced I couldn't have them just because I masturbate a ton, and I've never had one. So I was like, why will it ever happen? And then you gave me like a little bit of a pep talk, like a multiple orgasm pep talk. Like, you know, just don't open your mind to it. It was like a really, I don't know, zen pep <laughs> talk about it. And then I just went home that night. I didn't really put too much pressure on myself. And I had my first multiple orgasms, like five of them. You had five. I remember because the next day we were testing the touch and I was like, how'd it go? You're like, and you didn't tell me to around there. And she's like, I'm like, did you have multiple? She's like, five. Yeah. I think I gave you like the timestamps. I'm shooting now. I could die. I'm so happy. (laughs) Yeah. The timestamps. Yeah. She hasn't recorded one minute and then a minute. Right. So that's cool. So how, so so since then, Mm -hmm. have you, do you always have multiples now? Yeah. It's like I opened a third eye or something. (gasps) Right. Totally. It's crazy. Like now that my my body like or that my brain is convinced that I can do it it allows my body to do it so like it doesn't it only happens when I choose to you know and I can tell if like oh this orgasm is good for more right it's like since I've started to think about it every orgasm is so different that I can you know decide if I'm gonna keep going or stop and it's super easy that's cool so it was about changing your mind about what's possible totally I was just closed off to it and as soon as I decided not to be closed off to it anymore then it so goes. She's doing it now. Yeah. Okay, that's great. Thank you. Good story. Okay, <laughs> yeah. um, you know I love that. So Jamie, <laughs> yeah, it was interesting because I didn't really. When I first had my first multiple orgasm, I was just using my hands by myself, and I didn't really realize that I could do that. Because you know how sometimes you just have an orgasm that's just like, yeah. oh my god, that was so awesome. Can I take a retake of that, right. like right now, please? <laughs> yeah. And so that's just how I felt, and I was like, well, I'm just gonna keep going and see if it you know it happens again and it did but then um once I joined this lovely team here I opened up my world to sex toys which was great and the the womanizer specifically the deluxe version oh my gosh like that is just like multiple orgasm heaven I I was I'm like honestly really I like the first one a lot but once I got the second one the second womanizer yeah, the okay. first one is better um depending on your hands because it's a it's a little easier to grasp it and hold it in place Um, But the second one, it's uh, it comes with first of all, it comes with two different sizes of the silicone head, which is cool because if you do have a larger clitoris, it'll fit better into it. 
also it kind of changes up the sensations if you even even if you do have a smaller clitoris if you just change the head size it kind of changes the indirect exactly you got to play with it yeah so it kind of gives you a different pleasure air technology exactly um but i just i love it because first of all it knocks out your first orgasm in like it is a (laughs) a minute tops like seriously and then (laughs) The buttons are really easy to use. It's only an on-off button and then um, uh, an intensity button. This uh, The deluxe version has eight different settings. Um, I usually start out already on the second or third, depending, just because I do like a lot of... Uh, it has a little bit more vibrations, and I do like to have a little bit more intensity. Um, and then I'll start going, and then once I have my first orgasm, while I'm still kind of climaxing there, I turn the intensity up a little bit, and my like I can almost have like another <gasps> orgasm within that orgasm wow but then it's after like a bubble that, in a bubble but then after that you you're playing bubbles. i can't i can't keep going up intensity after that i have to bring it back down which is why i like the on off button if you just press it once instead of having to lower it step by step yes. it goes straight back to the beginning and so then that way i can work up to like my next one so i can have like three or four so the woman has been good for you in this way to like practice with the I think that's a good point that you just can turn it off and you don't have to yeah well it's, it, it doesn't yeah like you don't have to measure it down and it doesn't turn off all the way it just goes back to the first setting right, it's like mm. so it, it just it knows it's <laughs> like it's like okay you had an you were intense for a little bit and we're bringing it down that's I caught the clit whisperer wow. yeah right. speaking well, of which <laughs> it's like they designed it that Wait, way. we have that's to crazy. talk about <laughs> our video can people find our video absolutely okay yeah, I'm obsessed with this oh it's it's, it's video yeah. so good it's on we YouTube our website it's on uh yes everything yeah youtube youtube.com it's called the whisperer it's mm-hmm. called the whisperer it's about this i'm well, not gonna check spoil it out yeah, yeah it's a short film it's really moody and uh <laughs> it features the womanizer it's uh it's hilarious it's, it's it actually out. really good totally you want to see what it looks like so yeah. um jamie that's a good explanation of it because i know we've all had different experiences with the uh womanizer i just think it's crazy because it sucks like it, it sucks does on suck your clitoris. Clitoris. like yeah. i can't i've just never seen anything like it and it's pleasure air technology all the time right yeah. indirect stimulation all indirect that stuff i think like that's i always say like that's kind of what i thought if my clitoris could speak it would say do this thing that you're doing yeah, with this, this is story. what i want that's cool jam i love that okay where else are we good at orgasms are we yeah i mean that's there are plenty of other orgasms but those there are, are ones but we're covering we, today. this is all we had time <laughs> for ones. you guys are awesome thank you for sharing these experiences where can people find all these Stuff, the toys just go to our website sexwithemily.com yeah go to um we'll include them in the show like in the show posting on the website and also if you want to know more about the different kind of orgasms there's a blog on the website called um your orgasm orientation takes you through literally everything we just talked about for the most part with like clitoral you know vaginal all of that and you can kind of get a little bit more if you're looking for how to do it right that's a great point yeah. because the truth is a lot of stuff you're hearing on the show you might think like oh she's I didn't get that or she's you know, she's going too fast with that which I know I, I know I talk really fast and that happens maybe to mm-hmm. a lot of things but you can often find a lot of this information on our site if you would like to read things about it you know we, yeah. we have a lot of we have a, we have a dense amount of work absolutely it's that all you will like mm-hmm. um okay great and, yeah and then also again great solo expectations because you answer the three top uh masturbation questions we get asked I got Two of deep those. into it yeah one of them was how to masturbate by itself and the other one was like is my can my g-spot migrate Right. Yeah. But it's all about like locating the G spot yeah. when you're not sure that it's there. So. That was a good show. Yeah, Check that I out. thought you did really well. At, like, oh, well, thank you. You know, it's your job. I think you all <laughs> do really well. Thank you all for being here and uh, for killing it here in um, the new office. This yeah. is great. Let's yeah, uh, we should light some incense or something. Make sure you're following us on Snapchat because we're oh, just going to be snapping, snapping the new office. Mm-hmm. Yes, it's all Always. at Sex with Emily across the board Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. And I. I don't know. I love you all. Thank you so much. And thanks for listening. Was it good for you? Email me. Feedback at sexwithemily.com. I get a lot of emails looking for advice on just about everything, but I'm always excited to get questions that I can offer a definitive solution to. Although some of you are embarrassed to write me about lasting longer in bed, you should know it's way more common than you think. And there is a clinically proven solution, Promescent. Promescent is a quickly absorbing delay spray that was developed by urologists to address issues with premature ejaculation or PE. Make no mistake, this is not the old-fashioned delay spray that leaves you and your partner numb. It still allows your maximum sensation without any transfer to your partner. 
The makers of Promescent have been dedicated to helping men for years now, and they have taken the product through rounds of clinical tests that have proven its effectiveness. It is FDA compliant and has been endorsed by a host of medical professionals. Promescent is the real deal. Even if you don't always experience PE, Promescent can help you and your partner experience longer lasting sex, boost your confidence, and eliminate performance anxiety. Try it for yourself and see. Promescent is available without a prescription from a variety of retailers. For more information or to order, go to sexwithemily.com and click on the Promescent banner. 